What's up YouTube? So, you bought your Trezor wallet and you want to know how to set it up with MetaMask and your Ronin wallet for Axie Infinity? Keep watching. Let's get into it. Before we get started, I do want to mention all my social media handles here. There will be a link tree below in the details. You can click on that and it will take you to all my social media pages. Follow, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell here on YouTube so that way you'll know when I put a new video up. Let's jump into it. All right, so you got your Trezor wallet. Looks like this bad boy, brand new, fresh out of the box, connected to my computer and all set up. Um, I will be going through the entire setup of the Trezor, um, all the way from the beginning, brand new, uh, up to connecting it to Ronin and, uh, and MetaMask. So if you already have your Trezor set up already and you just need to know how to connect it to Ronin and MetaMask, you can um, check the details below for some timestamps to get to those portions of the video. There's a couple ways you can actually set this up. They've just recently released a, a, uh, a desktop version, a desktop application version. So this is their website. When you initially get the, uh, the Trezor, they'll tell you to go to trezor.io. This is what it looks like. Uh, so you can download the desktop application. Now, if you don't want to use the desktop application for some reason, you can go to the Trezor suite for web. For, the, for your browser, um, whatever browser you may be using, and it will pull up um, the browser version uh, of the Trezor suite. Now, personally, I actually like the application, so uh, I'm gonna use the application. I'm gonna close this here. I've got, the, I've got it downloaded and installed already. It looks just like this, right? Gonna click Begin Setup. Bada bing, bada boom, Setup Trezor. I'm just gonna set up a brand new hardware wallet um, with uh, new addresses and everything, right? So we have to set up Trezor here. Firmware ready, just gonna make sure you've got your firmware updated. If it's not, it will uh, initialize an update for you to, to download to your wallet. Your wallet. Um, I've already done that, so don't need to worry about it. If I wanted to, I could recover my wallet right here and I could click this and it'll start the initialization for me putting in my recovery seed phrases, right? Um, obviously not gonna do that. We're just gonna create a new wallet. Now you actually have two ways, two, two ways of recovering your wallet. Standard seed phrase basically is the exact same way that you recover your MetaMask um, or your Ronin wallet. All right, the second option is the Shamir share backup. With the Shamir share backup, each share is 20 words. So I'm gonna have 20 words in one share, 20 words in another share, 20 words in another share, 20 words in the fourth share. So there's four shares. Uh, in order to recover your wallet with the Shamir backup, uh, you have to have two to three or even all four um, shares in order to recover your wallet. So I'm gonna show you how to use a Shamir backup option because that's the one I'm using. It's the one I think is more secure. And if you're buying this hardware wallet, this being the Model T uh, version, there's no reason not to utilize it, right? So every time you do a tran uh, an action, it's gonna ask you to confirm on the Trezor. I have chosen the Shamir and it's asking me if I wanna do that. Yes, I do. So your wallet is almost ready. I'm gonna go ahead and create the backup now. Click the button, make sure you have your pen and make sure you have some paper. All right, so we click the check mark, make sure we understand all those three things and then we actually begin the backup, all right? So we're creating the backup, confirm it on the Trezor. So I've got to confirm on my Trezor, hit my green check mark and what it's saying, you're not gonna be able to read this, at least I don't think you'll be able to read this. Um, set number of shares. So remember that I said that I'm gonna have 20 words and four shares. So this is what where I'm making that decision. So I'm gonna conf I'm gonna continue, um, and it's gonna actually give me the option of setting the number of shares. Um, I'm gonna go. Let's see. The minimum you can go. Well, actually, you can go one share. I don't know why you would do that with the Shamir backup. So um, I would go at least four. Minimum is what I would do. I would do at least four. Um, the maximum you can go up to is 16. So you can go up to 16 shares. I'm gonna go four. I think four is a good, healthy, secure number for me. So I've set my number of shares. It tells me I've set that number of shares. I'm gonna hit that continue. It's gonna ask me how many shares I need in order to be able to recover the wallet, right? So you can kind of see it here, set threshold, the recovery seed and how many shares you need. Um, so what this is saying, is, and what this is basically implying is that in order to recover my wallet, I need to have three or four or however many I decide. Um, I need to have, well, let's say for example, I have four shares, um, 20 words per share. So I need to have three of those shares, every single word on those shares in order to recover the wallet. Or if I decide to go two, I need two of those four shares I have made 
in order to completely recover the wallet. If I if I say I only have one share out of those four um, those four shares I've created, then I can't recover the wallet. I'm going to set it to two. Okay. So I only need two of my shares in order to recover. So now it's kind of going down the checklist. Um, set the number of shares. Set threshold. Um, and then we're just going to hit continue. Now it's asking me to write down the 20 words. All right. So I'm going to write down 20 words um, for four different shares. It's going to take me a hot second, but uh, I'll be right back or I'll see you in like a second. I'm going to cut the video. <laughs> Magic. All right. All right. So I have written down all 20 words for all four shares. I'm at the last two words here. So I just kind of wanted to show you this final step here. So I got the last two words that I wrote down. Um, I'm going to hit the uh, hold to confirm here to confirm that I've written down. And now what I wanted to show you is this, that um, it's going to have you check to make sure that you've written down the words correctly. Um, so it's asking me to select word seven of the 20 words of the final share that I've done. Right. So when you're writing your words down, you want to make sure that you number them as you're writing them down, because it's obviously going to ask you to check them. And then also when you actually go to recovering um, the seed or not the seed, but the wallet, when you go to recover the wallet, you have to write them in order. So you want to make sure you have them in order as well. So select word seven of 20. I'm going to check my paper. Word 14 and word 20. Um, once I've checked those and it's confirmed it and I've got success, I confirm there and now it's telling me my backup is done. Use your backup whenever you need to recover your wallet. All right, perfect. Hit continue. Now it's saying my pin is not set, which I don't think you, you can't read there, but um, we're going to show you that here. It's going to say uh, continue to pin here. This is a, a, the way to log into the wallet. Multiple steps of security upon security. So I'm going to go continue to pin. Perfect. Once you've got it done successfully, it says success. You have successfully enabled pin protection. And now we're into our wallet. Wallet is created. I can activate whichever coins I want to have in there. Uh, I'm going to put the Ethereum only is what I'm going to activate. Um, and then I'm going to complete setup. Setup complete. That's as easy as it is. It's really quite simple. The hardest part, the most time consuming part is just writing all the words down. But you've got to do it. It's got to be done. Um, we can edit name here. So Axie Wallet. There you go. So now we're into our wallet. Um, into the hardware portion, portion of the wallet. Now we actually are creating the digital wallet within the hardware wallet. Um, so I'm actually going to use the hidden wallet version because again, it's more secure, it's hidden. If someone was to get into, if someone was to actually get into my hardware wallet, well now they need to have another phrase in, tor in order to actually access the digital wallet. Um, so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to enter a passphrase here. Um, let's see. And then I'm going to go access hidden wallet. I'm going to confirm on my Trezor. So I'm going into a digital wallet that is empty. So it just wants to confirm that I'm actually trying to access this empty wallet. Um, I do. So I'm going to go and go ahead and enter that password again. And this is actually uh, basically creating the digital wallet. All right. Uh, I understand the passphrases cannot be retrieved, unlike every other password. Yes, confirm this password phrase. So this is, again, creating the digital wallet within the hardware wallet. Confirming, again, go to your Trezor to confirm on your Trezor. So I'm in the wallet here right now. Um, I can receive, and that'll give me my address there. Um, I can send, um, input someone's address here, and I can send money. Um, I can add my tokens, which I need to do. So I'm actually going to go here. So what you'll see here, we're in the Ethereum address here. You, you obviously, you're not seeing uh, AXS or SLP, right? So being that those are tokens for the Axie Infinity Universe. So we actually need to add those. So what we're going to do is we're going to go tokens here. We're in overview, overview here. So this is your dashboard here. You actually want to go to the account. We're going to go tokens. We're going to add token here, right? Then it's going to ask you for the ERC or ERC20 token address. So we went to um, our CoinGecko to grab our contract addresses. So this is AXS. I'm going to grab my address here, click the copy, go back to my desktop suite and add token. I'm going to control V, paste that in there, add token. I'm going to go ahead and add another one. 
um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add another one, but you have to hit these three dots over here. So I'm going to hit that and I'm going to add token there. And now we're going to get our SLP token. Um, copy address there. Go back to our desktop suite. Paste that in there. Add token. So now you'll see AXS and the SLP tokens are in here. Uh, note, you cannot send uh, axes, like the actual Axie NFTs, to the hardware wallet. Um, because the hardware wallet, the Trezor wallet, cannot actually hold NFTs. It can only hold the coins or tokens associated with um, the uh, the cryptocurrencies. So just you know, be aware of that. Don't try sending axes to this hardware wallet. It won't work. So don't don't try to do that. But you do. You can add your your AXS token and the SLP token to the hardware wallet to see how much uh, you're holding in it. Next step you're gonna do is we're going to go to our MetaMask. So I'm on the Axie Infinity dashboard here. Uh, we are gonna connect the hardware wallet now to the MetaMask, that's what you wanna do first. Uh, I am on Firefox, but the instructions are basically the same for Google Chrome. Um, so we've got our extensions up here, MetaMask up here. Um, you'll see I already have my uh, hardware wallet connected. Um, with this new hardware wallet that I've created, I'm going to connect a new one. So we're gonna click that Connect Hardware button I'll show that to you again because it was kind of quick. Uh, connect hardware wallet. So you just click that button. It'll bring you to this site here. So um, you'll see uh, it shows you all the Ethereum addresses um, that the hardware wallet has. It has 50 Ethereum addresses. So each Trezor wallet, at least for the Model T versions, have 50 Ethereum addresses, uh, addresses already uh, inputted into the hardware wallet. That's the maximum amount of Ethereum addresses the hardware wallet will have um, that you can actually use. So you'll see I've used one already, so we can't obviously import that one that's already imported. So I'm going to go ahead and import number two here. And we're going to go here, we're going to click unlock. If I go to the MetaMask, you'll now see Treasure 2. And you'll also see the little hardware button, the little, little icon right next to it. Um, it'll let you know that that is a Treasure hardware wallet. Really simple, really easy. Really easy. So I've already got that on there. If I was to buy um, or send money to this MetaMask wallet, Trezor 2 hardware wallet that's in here, uh, it would actually show that money in here um, in the actual application. So again, if I was to send or buy money with the MetaMask wallet's version of the Trezor wallet, if I was to buy money here or send money here, uh, it's the same address right here uh, that is here in your application. All right, so whatever you do here or in the MetaMask is, is basically going to be um, shown in both spots. So I can actually buy ETH. I can buy ETH here if I wanted to. I could compare. This is also a pretty cool little uh, addition to the application that kind of Trezor gives you. So you can go here and you can buy ETH and we can compare offers. Let's say we wanted to buy, I don't know, whoever. I'm US dollars, so I'm just going to go US dollars. Let's say I wanted to buy $1,000 worth. I could compare offers and obviously want it to be Ethereum. Hit the compare and it's going to give you a whole bunch of options and the way you can pay for it. Um, it says it includes all fees as well. So really cool. You can actually buy Ethereum here in the application. Whatever you buy here, again, will show up in the MetaMask um, wallet version of the Trezor 2. We've got the Trezor connected to the MetaMask. Now we need to do the Ronin. Um, this is where a lot of people have some troubles and I actually had some troubles connecting my hardware wallet to the Ronin. So we're going to the Ronin extension here. You will see that I've got a Trezor wallet already connected. You'll see it's got a blue um, bu bubble here. So that lets you know that, um, you know, that this is a Trezor wallet. Um, it is a hardware wallet, but it is a Ronin hardware wallet. So there's a difference here. This Ronin hardware wallet will actually allow you to hold axes within this wallet because it is technically a Ronin wallet, not the Trezor wallet. Um, but in order to make decisions, in order to sell, in order to buy, in order to do anything with this Ronin Trezor wallet, this hardware wallet here, in order, in order to do anything with that, you have to confirm it on your uh, actual hardware, your piece of hardware, AKA two-factor authentication, right? Um, I will show you the big issue I was having uh, initially when I first started doing this, and I think some of some of the people out there are having this issue as well that I've seen on Reddit and um, even on the Trezor uh, forum pages and in the Discord for Axie Infinity. So 
In order to connect your wallet, you click the little person icon up here to manage your accounts. You'll see connect hardware wallet right here. We're just gonna click that. Um, it's gonna bring you to this web page, connect hardware wallet, uh, plug it in, make sure it's plugged in, importing account, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna connect wallet. It's gonna go to a new web page. Uh, and this is where a lot of people get stuck because this is, well, this is where I got stuck. Uh, it just gets stuck on loading here. Okay, so this is the treasure forums. These are the, uh, the bullet points that they recommended doing. Um, so make sure your treasure uh, is running the latest firmware. Obviously mine is, you know, got it updated for me. So make sure that's updated. Uh, make sure you have the latest treasure bridge. Now this is something I did not have. Um, so we wanna make sure you install that and you see the actual treasured process running in your activity systems task manager. So I will show you this actually. So if I show you my um, task manager here, you'll actually see treasured working here. So you actually wanna make sure that is installed correctly. So just click the link um, and it will bring you to a treasure webpage for you to install uh, the bridge, right? Um, so you wanna make sure you do that, have that done. Um, make sure you're using supported browsers, obviously Chrome or Firefox, I'm mean, on Firefox, so we're good there. Um, clear your browser's cache. So this is something you wanna make sure you do as well. Um, and I'm going to do this now. Okay, so we've cleared the cache from the browsers. Um, now, uh, let's see, not only using a VPN, but also certain advanced uh, firewall or antivirus settings. So this is another thing to you know be aware of. Um, firewall settings or your antivirus, um, such as AVG or whoever, um, they may block the connections from happening. Um, so you wanna make sure you kind of deactivate those when you're initially trying to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate my antiviruses right now, my firewall, just to, you know do it for like 10 minutes while we're getting this set up. So that way it'll reactivate uh, after that 10 minutes. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, and then the last uh, bullet point they mentioned is use only one application website browser um, with the Ronin, uh, not Ronin, but the Treasure um, application here, right? So. Let's go ahead and do that, or I'm gonna go deactivate my, my AVG and uh, we'll get uh, we'll go ahead and test it and see if this all works. Okay, so I've got my firewall disabled, I've got my antivirus disabled, um, I've also disabled all my other security measures. Um, you'll also see that I disconnected my hardware wallet from the application, the desktop application for Trezor, so the Trezor Suite. Um, because if you don't remember in the forum, it did mention that um, you wanna only be using one application or web browser with the hardware wallet um, because sometimes it can you know complicate things and mess things up so i've gone ahead and done all that uh, another thing you have to remember um, with your ad blocker or your um, website blocker you also want to make sure you disable them completely don't just disable them in like the extension like for the certain web browser you actually want to just disable them completely only when you're doing this um, this initial setup you can reactivate them once you have the treasure wallet uh, uh, added on to the Ronin wallet all right so you want to make sure you actually disable them there so we're gonna go back to our Ronin extension here go to the little person there um, we're gonna go connect hardware wallet uh, connect wallet and this is what it's supposed to do. It's gonna bring up uh, export public key, allow extension, um, yes. I don't ever hit the don't ask me again because I just want I just want to make sure everything is secure. I want that step to, this step to always come. Um, allow once for this session. You probably could click that and have no problems, but I just leave it up. So we export that. Then we're gonna enter in our passphrase for the actual um, hardware wallet. Um, so you're actually gonna see here it is actually saying, please type your passphrase uh, on the connected host. So we're gonna go ahead and connect our, or type in our passphrase here. A little weird. Uh, once you've got that entered, hit enter. We're gonna confirm it on the trusser. Confirmed, green check mark. All right, once you've done that, it's gonna bring up all your Ethereum addresses for you to select from. Uh, what you want to do here is you kind of want to match up the one that you've got in your MetaMask here um, for the wallet that you're going to be using, which is actually this one. Um, I don't know why it is called Trezor 1, so we're going to go Trezor 2 here. Um, so we're going to change that. Um, I'm going to confirm uh, this is the address for the uh, wallet that I'm using uh, for the hardware wallet here, 03-35099A, uh, 03509998. A, C, and, and, and so on and so forth. Just confirm that those are the same. Um, we're gonna go ahead and continue. We're gonna click select that. 
account connected beautiful that's what we like to see let's just double check to see if we see it here in the ronin wallet and we do it is right there looking pretty as ever now your ronin wallet and your metamask probably don't need to be the same address um that's probably it's actually probably not needed because they're completely two different things right uh, the ronin wallet this is actually creating a completely different wallet um from the trezor the, the the connecting the hardware actually doesn't like this ronin address that you see here this ronin um and semicolon uh this completely changes the address it creates a ronin address basically so i mean you probably don't have to have them to you know be the same i just do that for my sake when i'm you know once i get through using all my all through through all of my ethereum addresses um you know i just keep it in order i keep it organized for myself you know i know i've used that ethereum address with metamask i know it's also being used for the ronin um and it's just keeping everything straight for me so but you probably don't need to do that um so again we've got that connected we're good to go uh if i go to the xc infinity dashboard i can select that ronin right now treasure number two um, and i can actually log in with ronin wallet it's going to ask me to sign and confirm on the treasure uh two-factor authentication we're going to hit confirm i will actually show you here well actually first it will uh, ask me to allow uh, for the public reading of the keys so i will obviously confirm that say yes i will type in my password here boom you can see here accessing hitting wallet do you want to confirm that yes i do confirm the seed phrase bada bing bada boom we're in we're logged in. We're gonna allow the session for one more time. This is basically um, showing you what you're signing into. You know, make sure that it's uh, exactly what you're going into, which is the Lunasian Kingdom. Yes, this is. So we're gonna go hit the green check mark. Um, and so that's it. If you watched all the way to this point, uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time. Um, hopefully, this video has helped you out. Uh, I really believe the hardware wallet is extremely important for anyone in the crypto world to have. That two-factor authentication is exactly what the hardware wallet is. It really just peace of mind um, and will really help you out in securing your assets. Um, make sure you check out all my social media handles here on the side. Link below in the details. Uh, follow me on Twitch. Check, my, check out my streams of Axie Infinity. Hit me up on Discord if you have any questions. Um, we've got a community growing there. would love to have you be a part of that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll definitely respond. Until next time, have a great night. Have a great morning. Have a great day. God bless. Be awesome. We'll see you next time. Peace out.